we go. We live. We're live. Okay. okay. It, now, now we're live. Now we're going live. Boom. Now we're live. Okay. Okay. We're in here. All right. So, yeah, we live. We're live. I mean, okay. It, now, now we're live. Now we're going live. Boom. Now we're live. My I bad. Think we live now for real. Yeah, yeah. We, <laughs> we're live for real now. Let me mute that real quick. Okay. Now I can see what's going on. Hello, wonderful, good people out there. How are you doing on this lovely Sunday? Afternoon, we have Miss Rez Garden to Kitchen is first in the building. Hi, how you doing, ma'am? Uh, love Notes, my wonderful moderator, Love Notes. Thanks for being here. I appreciate you. Kwamzia, Kwamzia Hudson, I believe that's right. Kwamzia Hudson, how you doing? Mike, what's going on, Mike? What's up, bro? How you doing, brother? Grace Ortiz, hey, how you doing? Good to see you. Um, so, real quick, we're going to get this going. If you've never um, heard of the wonderful, the magnificent uh, eco neighbor. He's here with us today. He's agreed to spend some time with us, give us a little feedback on himself. And uh, we're gonna dive into the topic as far as buying land. We'll get into why and why for any reason you should be listening to him when it comes to buying land. There's a good reason behind it. Um, so just be patient with us and we're gonna get there. Um, who we have, A.N. Ravenel, R Ravenel, A.N. Ravenel, I'm sorry, I know I butchered your name, hello everyone, <laughs> happy oh, to your heart, my friend, <laughs> <laughs> this here. so to reap 65, hello all, I like that, I like that name, uh, back to our roots homestead, hey, how y'all doing, back to our roots, baby, back to back our roots, y'all need to go check out that channel, that's a wonderful, lovely channel, um, so we got Eco Neighbor here, he hails out of uh, Florida. Um, and let's start off by just tell the people about yourself. If you've never heard about Eco Neighbor before, let these people know who you are, what you're about, and why you started your YouTube channel, how you came about in this YouTube game, so to speak. The floor is yours. Well, first of all, I'd like to say greetings to everybody. And thank you, Rob. Rob to Rob, because I'm Rob too. Yeah, Rob. I don't know what it is about these girls. We love this Rob thing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I think I think I think Robs are connected to the earth for some reason. But I mean, you know, especially if you're a Virgo, I yeah, I bite off on that for sure. That's what I'm saying, man. We love hard and we love growing. We love co right. eating at the same time. So it's all good. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but 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 just to give a I don't want to put you to sleep, but just to give you a little quick little history. I first got into garden by my great great grandmother. She was born back in 1883 or 84. Okay. And those generations, she she introduced me, then her daughter, who was my great great grandmother. Okay. And then my great grandmother, she, man, she was amazing. You know what I'm saying? She, yeah, she just we are. She when they before there was recycling, she already taught me recycling. You know what I'm saying? It's like she she grew her chickens, she grew her her worms. She even her dishwash liquid went to the garden to grow earthworms. You know what I'm saying? The wow. chicken, the chicken, we fed the plants with the chicken uh, manure. Everything kind of was the cycle of life. And okay. even even her clothes, she used her scraps and she cut them up. Everything was just connected. Nothing went to waste. So that was the introduction to me with gardening. And my mom pushed me to cutting grass. And we had these hedges that wrapped around. I mean, we lived in my grandfather's house. And man, he, he had these hedges that wrapped around. And I hated cutting hedges. But for some reason, I did it well. And people started to stop by the house. And they was like, can you do my yard? And so I started riding my bicycle, pull, pulling my push lawnmower, going from house to house, cutting grass. Okay. And, and along the way, there was this one woman that I knew that I went to church with. She introduced me to another level of gardening. She wanted everything immaculate. I had to, before there was blowers, I had to sweep with a, a straw broom. <laughs> I, I mean, they had those little the star wheel rollers where I had to edge everything. Yeah. And every spring, we would go at least 100 miles because I grew up in South Georgia. We would go to a place that I won't even say what lead don't like to talk about, but that was all, the only thing we had. But we went to those nurseries right. and we bought plants. And she showed me all, I, I had no idea. All I knew was grass 
All I knew was garden. I didn't know about flowers. So, okay. man, I got hooked. From that point on, I was hooked with flowers. So throughout my life, I always kind of grow something. And But fast forward to now, my wife, she influenced me. And I did a video about two years ago. I dropped a video. Um, I always kept a yard. I always kept a lot of stuff in my yards. And she was like, you got a talent. Won't you share it with somebody? And so Gigi, Gigi's in the house. Shout out to Gigi. Shout out to Gigi. Shout out to Gigi. Gigi. Like what she did, she she encouraged me to say, you know, you need to start showing some of this stuff. Some people might find an interest in it. And when the moment I had three people looking at what I was doing, <laughs> boy, I felt like a king. <laughs> I couldn't believe three people actually liked my video. So I was like, oh my goodness, man. Three people you didn't know, right? <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm like, I'm like, my mind was blown. I'm like, what am I doing out here? You know, and and that that two years ago. Let me let me go back. I dropped one video two years ago, uh-huh. and I, I I got caught up in my life. I didn't say nothing. I didn't even log back in. I forgot my password. But she said, what, "What what's up with your channel?" And here it is, about four months ago. She said, "You know, look at your channel. You're getting some activity on your channel." And so I went in. I, I figured out my password, logged in. And I had some supporters and I was like, where are your next videos? Where are your next? And I'm like, OK, I'm trying this thing. So why I do it. Yeah. Why not? Why not? And, you know, so I've been having fun. man. I've met a lot of beautiful people. Broke Farmer. Shout out to Broke Farmer. Broke. Her healthy. GG. Love Notes is a trooper. She's a soldier. I much love right. Love Notes. And I, I mean, I met a lot of beautiful people, man, who share a lot of insight, including yourself. I mean, we never met. But we talked a couple of times. I felt like I've known you for years. And I, I'm honored to be on your channel. And thank you for risking your integrity to put somebody like me on your channel. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> there's no telling what may vacillate out of my mouth. <laughs> all right. Thank you for that nice, lovely disclaimer. Y'all heard him say it. If he says it and you don't like it, that's on him. No, that's on me, baby. That's on me. <laughs> Let me jump back in the chat real quick. Sister Sue, thank you for being here. I appreciate you. Yes, Virgos are in the bit. Virgo, back baby. Down, Bruce. Um, Rob, uh, um, uh, my man, Lawn Care in Missouri. I can't think of your name right. Life in Lawn, the Lawn Care Life in Missouri. God provides. That's right, sir. Uh, th thanks you for chopping in, uh, dropping in today. I appreciate you. Uh, Gigi's Naturals Homestead. We already got her. Thank you. Lovely GG for being in the building. TT's Urban Pantry. Listen, T -T. if y'all if y'all have like a niche for like uh, um, nice little tea sets and stuff like that, listen, TT finds the deals, all the deals. And then of course she's got the Urban Pantry going on. Great little pantry. Food. That's a warehouse, man. That's a warehouse, right? A warehouse, she got, she no got all the recipes for you if you need to go check her out. Mm -hmm. Uh, Broke's in the building. Appreciate you, brother. Um, let me see. What up, Broke Farmer? Skinny Puddle Ranch. What's going on? I haven't seen you in a while. Stinky Puddle Ranch. Okay. So most of your influence came from your grandmother. That's yeah. what I'm about. Behind every strong uh, man, there is a powerful woman. I, I believe in that. Matter of fact, the painting that's on the wall is called like the man behind the woman or something like that. But uh, the woman behind the man, uh, something like that. That's what that painting's called. That I picked up. I, I was inspired by. It. I love the title of it, so I picked it up. Now, um, so that's amazing to hear. That I, I like hearing stuff like that. And you said that your mom got you out cutting yards, right? She had you out here cutting the grasses. So in a way, she she instilled some some entrepreneur values yeah. super early in your life. And and what did that turn into? You know, we know why you got back on the channel. You got yeah. you, you you got your inspiration through some very powerful women in your life, um, and then what did all that turn into? What were you so caught up with doing? Well, you didn't I mean, realize your YouTube. It's just so much. It's just so much. I, I one of the things that I look at is uh, imagine this. You know, we all go to jobs. We all or we already been to jobs for years in our life. Imagine here you take something and you have the opportunity to create it to make it beautiful. Mm -hmm. You know, to me, and it's hard work. It's like working in the yard. What I do, I also do landscaping on the side. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's, my, that's my release because I have anxiety, I have stress, okay. and, and I have hypertension. I have to stay active because my job 
And most of my jobs is sit down office type work. Okay. So the way that I incorporate, I don't like doing the weights and the working out and all that kind of stuff, going to the gym. It's all right, but it's hard on the body. Yeah, but I'm telling you, man, you dig up a, a lower pelum that's been in there for 20 years in the ground. I mean, that's work. You know what I'm saying? And so it's something about somebody says, I depend on you and I trust you to go in here and make it look good. I've seen your work. I've seen what you do. Right. And go in here and I have a lump of dirt and some weeds, which I, I got a problem with the word weeds. But yeah, I know you turf therapy, so I'm not even going to go down that route. But I believe every plant has a purpose and everything has a purpose. I think sometimes we have to just kind of organize and maintain. It. That's all. Yeah. So the, the the fact that I have the opportunity to go in and take plain nothing and, and then I look at it and people are like, wow, that looks good. Yeah. You know, that's gratifying. You know, it's not every day we can go out and do something. Something simple as cutting and edging and, right. and blowing off a yard. I mean, you ain't have to go in, go in hard, but it, it gives you this sense of, of of pride. It gives you this sense of worth. Right. And 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 it's something about putting my hands in that dirt. And I look at me, I'm putting a look. Let me show you something, my brother. Okay. This is my prized possession. I always Ooh. show you, you know what I'm saying? This it, I, I can't imagine. I bought a plant over six years ago and I put it in the ground. It ain't nothing I did. Right. I watered a little bit. I might have put some mulch around it. Right. Man, I'm a part of something great. After I'm dead and gone, that's going to be here. And guess what? Yeah. It's going to give to somebody that I didn't even know until the next generation, then the next generation. Next. And it's just something to be a part of something that gives more than what you put in. Right. Yeah. You know? That, that, that stuff right there, man, you can't beat that, man. That's powerful, man. That's yeah. powerful. Yeah, I miss you, Elevated Lawnscapes. What's up, Cam? Thanks for being here, brush, uh, brother. Uh, Lioncrest Outdoors, Farmer Q, thanks for being in, being in the building. My brother from the other side of the pond, Petals <laughs> of the Paving Slabs. Listen, this is probably one of the most unique channels on YouTube when it comes to the flower game. Eco, you said you're in the flowers. I know you're just yeah. as much as in the flowers as I am. Yeah, yeah. What what my man Stu does, right? He he breaks down the meaning behind these different plants. So hmm. like, and they'll usually be in season. I can't remember the one that he just did. Um, my mind keeps telling me chrysanthemums, but I know it's not chrysanthemums. But you know, he does one on dandelion. He'll do one on uh, you know, he might do one on milkweed, all these different things. A lot of things that people, a lot of the things that he grows, people consider weeds, but they have a lot of <laughs> beneficial uses. We trying to figure it out, man. We trying to figure it out. Cabinet, it cabinet, things like that. So if you are interested, if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, please go over and check out um, mm. my man, uh, Pedals on the Paving Slabs. Pedals mm. on the Paving Slabs. And he has a Nice little UK accent to go along with the whole thing. So mm -hmm. I think that's pretty cool. So, all right. So we, we, we brushed on it a little bit. You said that you took your business. Uh, well, you took that, that, that thing that was instilled in you as a young child. And then you realized that you could knock out two birds with one stone. You can mm -hmm. create a source of income yeah. and you can use it to treat yourself, so self-treat yourself for anxiety, the stress that you have to deal with. And then the, the cream on the crop of all of it is you're making lives, people's lives better. They instill that trust in you and you enrich their lives, whether it be visible or you know you cut them a deal that the big, the big um, long care guys couldn't do, or you got to them sooner because they were so delayed on the big long care guys or landscaping guys schedule. So that's amazing. Yeah. Now, how starting some of my ceilings while I listen to you guys? That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's the perfect <laughs> grow, time. baby. Grow, Start dropping your seeds. Matter of fact, I got a uh, yeah. tomorrow or tonight. I'll probably do it when I get done with the live. I've had moringa seeds. I was actually going to go live with you guys on the first and and sow these seeds because what better plant to sow on the beginning of the year than the tree of life? But 
I finally read the label and I, I saw that I needed to let them soak for at least a day or two. So I didn't do it. I mixed it and then I just <laughs> let it soak. But I'm starting my Moringa and um, here in about a month, I'll start my onions. I'll probably go ahead and get my peppers going shortly after that. But drop those seeds, people. Drop those seeds. Okay. Um, so I was shifting gears. The lawn and the landscaping, where in or about in your life did landscape, I mean, not landscape, property, uh, real estate, where did that fit in? When did that become a thing for you? Yeah. Why did you do it initially? And let's talk about some of the things that you learned. Let's get into that topic that we brought here today, yeah. brought these people here today for. Thank you, everyone that's in the building. Thank you for everyone that smashed that likes up, but that like yeah. button so far. But what brought you into uh, real, real estate? You know, what, what well, was there, there was a couple of things that brought me into it. Um, first started off with my uncle. I had an uncle that was like my father and I will never forget. Uh, I had I had an uncle and a great uncle that, that keep reminding me about land and how important land was. But my uncle that was like my father, my father, he we used to ride in his truck okay. and he used to fantasize about owning land. And as I was a little boy, you know, I'm, I'm just sitting there, I'm listening, taking it in. And I never forget the time he, he found his first property. And when he found that property, he was like, I remember it took him almost a, a year and a half to save up for, for the money because, you know, I grew up in South Georgia and right. land is pretty, pretty reasonable there compared to where I'm at now. Okay. Um, I would say it's dirt cheap compared to where I'm at right now. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, um, I remember him saving up. I remember him coming and he had this little container uh, where he lived with my grandmother and he saved up and he got the land. I remember working out, man. I worked tirelessly pulling up roots, cutting. I mean, I even still got a burn mark on my leg from the chainsaw where we were cutting down. I, he asked me to hand him a chainsaw, this big, huge chainsaw as a child. And yeah. I burnt my leg. I still got the, the scar on there. But I remember those processes, the septic tank, the surveys. I remember the whole process. And I remember the look on his face. And I watched the end result of that land, which later on is funny. They expanded the highway. And he went through negotiation, tried to rob him for the land. And later on, he, he got what he wanted. Right. But I just remember that whole process of, man, the look on his face. The, 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 I mean, he was grateful for what he had. Right. And it felt like a sense of accomplishment. So that's what kicked the land thing off for me. Okay. And then fast forward, I bought my piece, my first piece of property when I was 23. Uh, okay. When I first moved, I first moved to Florida. Uh, my wife and I, we just got married. And I didn't, I was allergic to apartments. I was allergic to pain. <laughs> he was allergic yeah, to I would break out into breakouts. <laughs> and I, I was a country boy from Georgia and I moved to Tallahassee. Okay. And the rent, let, let me tell you, I'm, I'm keeping it, I'm, I'm telling you how 100 it was. We were paying <laughs> $80 a month. Let me, let me repeat that. We was paying, we were paying $80 a month and we went to $600 a month. What? I was like. From a house to an apartment? No, those were two apartments. Oh, the, the, Georgia. the Georgia, the Georgia, Georgia apartment was $80 a month. Uh-huh. Then I got, I, I, I said, I want to move to Florida. My dream was always moving to Florida because my father's from Florida yeah. and I always wanted to move to Florida. I always loved Florida. I spent my summers in Florida. So I said, I'm moving to Florida. And we both agreed, let's move to Florida. I finally got to Florida. We finally got to Florida and I landed my first gig and the rent was $600 a month. It was $597. I'm sorry, $597. I'd have been going back to Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> we went from eighty dollars to five ninety seven. No. And 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 this is I'm I'm talking about when I was like twenty three. I'm a I'm a fully grown man now. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so and so my thing is that was actually <laughs> she said it was raggedy too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the eighty dollars were raggedy, but not the five ninety seven. The five ninety seven was nice. <laughs> Jesus, he said that just made his eyes water. Yeah, I know, right? Like I'd have been rethinking how much I really wanted to be in Florida. <laughs> well, well, one thing I tell you, a lot of people they say, you know, I want to retire in Florida. I'm going to take my 
up north money. I'm going to take my California. Now, California is something different. But what I do for a hobby, I just look at markets. I look at land. But I let me let me start out by saying this, though. I am not a real estate agent. No. I am not a professional. Mm-mm. I'm just sharing some of the things that really? I remember going through. And I said, man, I wish somebody said, hey, knucklehead, think about this before you do this and think about this. And that's all I'm trying to do is just share it with somebody who might be interested and whether they want to buy just a lot or whether they want to buy a home, whether they want to buy a homestead, whether they want to buy just raw land or invest in property. I'm just telling you uh, stuff that I've done. I tried it all. I've done it all. I've taken real estate. I think my wife was a realtor for years. And so we, we had that process where we've been in, involved in transactions. Mm. Okay. I'm looking in the chat right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, Georgia is raggedy. Dang, love knows. You went though the whole state though? My goodness. <laughs> well, that depends on my money you want to spend. <laughs> Unicorn lady. I dropped some seeds this morning, onions, carrots, Roma, tomatoes, peppers. You're in 8A. Okay. I'm about to say you must be in the eight something or yeah, yeah, all yeah. that. Yeah, me. In the rural Georgia, not Atlanta. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and farmer Q says he's very interested. So Okay, now we get give people a little background. You have learned through trial and error, through the people who raised you, uh, firsthand experience, and there's some things that you wish that you knew yeah. that, that you didn't know before mm-hmm. you jumped into this. Um, so, oh, Jay Weezy, hey, how you doing? I want one acre in Georgia for personal and few rentals in other places. Okay, so let's talk about types of land, right? You kind of touched on it, right? Uh-huh. So. So you got your raw land that you could purchase and then you can yeah. use that raw land for different things. Uh, then what other else types of land do you have? Cause that's about as far as my depth goes when okay. we're talking about just buying land mm-hmm. and what are the key differences and some things that people want to keep in mind when they're making these choices, you know? Yeah. So like, I guess uh, from a, let's put it from an investment standpoint versus you are going to use that land, whether it be you live on it or pump some type of produce out of it, or just set up like my brother, he has a dream to buy a nice amount of land and possibly set up a tools range on it. You know what I mean? The, 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 those metal tools that you got to feed them that metal, metal. Click, tool. click, that click, click, click. click that, <laughs> yeah. So he would love to do that one day. Um, let's, let's, let's try to give the people a nice uh, wave type wave top high points are some yeah. things that they should watch out for and consider when we're working with these two different categories. Yeah, most definitely. I, I, I say the first thing that you have to ask yourself is why do I want this piece of land? That's and that's point. gonna that's gonna break everything up. Once you once you decide, okay, I want a piece of land, why do I want it? You got like you said investment side, you got the homestead side, you also have I just want a place to lay my head. I want a place to be. Right. So with those three branches, let's take a look at this. Land, first of all, if you're dealing with raw land, understand time, 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 and patience, patience, patience. If you're trying to flip and invest land, unless you got an inside scoop and you have, before it goes to market, you have that insight where the bank is calling you, picking up the phone and calling you, or investment broker is picking up the the phone and calling you saying, hey, can you go in on me? Mm -hmm. You're going to... There's ways you can do it, but your, your time period is going to be a whole lot longer and you need to be prepared for that. Now, I'm not saying everything is is what I'm saying, but I'm saying be mentally prepared that I might have to sit on this for 10 years. Wow. Well, I might have sent it in for five years because you got to think about development on the investment side. Right. You on the investment what side. And on one thing that could probably help people with the investment side is uh, like taking a simple trip down to your uh, zone. So you're zoning planning, and planning, planning, zoning. planning and seeing what their plans are for the next five, 10 years, because you yeah. can also find yourself purchasing raw land in an area that looks like you're going to be able to have 50 chickens, a mule, oh, and yeah. a whole a whole bunch of cows or something. But if you look at the city plan in 10 years, they're going to rezone that area and it's not going to be outside of city limits anymore. Yeah, right? well, 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 that's that's the thing that I really look at, too. Um, even when when we're looking at right now, we're looking at purchasing some more for possibly homestead. Mm-hmm. And and one of the things about rural land and county land, you got to be very careful with 
the deed restrictions. You got to be the zoning restriction because some you might see, oh, it's in the it's in the county, it's in the outskirts of town. I'm good. I even see somebody growing some cattle, but they could be grandfathered in, and the zoning could have already been changed, and you can't even grow a chicken in right. that area. Right. So 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 you definitely want to do your research. You definitely want to understand that, like you said, the zoning. They when 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 cities and counties they plan, they don't plan five years, two years. They plan decades, even past their lifetime, yeah. uh, of what they're going to do and how they're going to cultivate that whole area. Because you you got to think about it. Las Vegas was a little bit piece of land. Miami was a little speck of land. In the I remember in the 1940s, my great my great aunt. She, she said there was a migration in the 1940s where you could, my dad bought his house in um, near the Keys for $23,000 back in the 80s. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But he turned around and sold that little, what, a thousand, twelve hundred square foot house for maybe a quarter of a meal. Right. But think about that time period, 80, 80 something till the 2000s, that's a long time. A and you got time. taxes, you got insurance, you got upkeep, you got maintenance. Hurricanes. Hurric oh, I, <laughs> look, look. The reason why it got to be 1200 because of hurricane and after the money, the proceeds, he got to extend it. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. so, so on, the, on the investment side, be prepared. On the homestead side, take a look at what you want to do. Are you growing cattle? Are you growing um, a garden? Is it is the topography? Is it hilly? It, I mean, do you have runoff? If you want a little spot, you might have 10 acres, but only um, two or three of those acres might be plantable. Mm -hmm. so you, you, you got to you got to take a look at that. And yeah. you got to also look at man, it's so many different things. Like you got to also look at if you're planning to buy a home, just say you're not trying to go on the outskirts. Okay. You need to look at school zone. OK. You need to look at uh, restrictions, HOAs, uh, homeowners association. That's a big uh, one. Yeah, I you know I want I bought me some land, but I want to build my own house. And I want to be my own general contractor. You can't do that in a lot of states, but they may have a roof pitch a certain. They may have certain size square footage. Uh, they may have your even your fence, your color of your house. They may have all these different restrictions and the different exterior. You might say, "Hey, I want, I want a um, hardy plank," but they may say, "No, you need a stucco, especially down here. You might need a stucco and brick." Right. So you got to be prepared to say, "You know, I, I thought I was gonna do a pole barn on this property I built, but when you go down to plant and zone, they said, no, you can't do that. You right. can't do that.'" And then the HOA say, "You definitely can't do that." Right. And we need to approve every every process of your bill. So all of that stuff, you want to do your research prior than saying. Man, that's a good price. Now, let me tell you something you're going to find. In those subdivisions where it's already planned, the infrastructure, the water, the electric, all of that, your land is going to be either one way or the other. It's going to be real cheap or it's going to be real high. Yeah. And the real cheap, watch the restrictions. Because the real cheap land, you might get some good prior land, but you might need to spend over half as much as you would have had to spend right down the street. Mm. So, so you got to look at all those different things before you get ready to plant. It's a lot of preparation before you actually get ready to buy that land. Like I said, you want to ask why. You definitely want to ask why. And then think about why you want to use it. Um, because I, I know some people who bought some land to hunt, some acreage to hunt. Back home, uh, they bought some, but you got restrictions sometimes. With the hunting, you yeah, them. you might can only shoot south for the first five acres, and then you and then you're next or something like that. So yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I got a good question in here. Um, well, not a question; it's a request, and we don't have to touch on it right now. Um, I'd actually like to shift into um, after you ask the person, you know, what are you purchasing this land for? We hit a lot of the good topics as far as things that you want to think about going down to your city to see what that planning looks like. So if you're buying land, I mean, and that works both ways, whether you're getting it for homesteading to build your house on or for a investment stern yes. standpoint, when you're talking about buying that raw land, your first stop should be down the city plans because yes. it's going to give you an idea like, okay, is the building moving out West? 
to where this property is. And now I can ensure that my property value is going to raise, or I can ensure that my home value will raise in accordance with the property value because they're putting this over here or they're trying to build this up over here, or are they about to run a highway through here and it's <laughs> going to make it worth half the amount that it, that it is now. Yeah. You know, it, could turn, it could transition to commercial property. Right, transition I mean, to commercial I mean, property. I, I, I remember, I remember my first home. rental property. Our first rental property, it was in the middle of nowhere. Uh huh. But you got to find a certain renter that wants that right you i mean there's process like between one year lease to two year lease between that gap between them leaving and somebody you got to be prepared to maintain that speaking of lease lease to own what do you know about lease to own that's what i was building uh -huh. and by the way um how you doing auntie linda i saw you up in here i can't hey, see auntie you. linda FIFA, ben israel i'm glad you're here and i'm happy that you're finding this content uh, worthwhile container crops gardening hi how you doing that everyday life of an ocd ish chick are you an actual channel because if you yes. are i gotta go check that out yes she definitely <laughs> a channel she definitely she a channel oh okay, yes I gotta go check that out all right um yeah i think i got everyone unicorn lady tech yep yeah. okay we're good cool so um leasing the own what do you know about that if anything at all can you speak on that yeah uh leasing up leasing the purchase okay uh, be be careful. I imagine. Yeah, be careful. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> be careful. No, no, no. A lot of times if you got raw land, that is, it, if you had a percentage, the percentage would be a whole lot higher that because a lot of your traditional banks will not lend you on raw land, period. <laughs> a lot of them, a lot of them won't. Now you will find your farm credit, um, your farm, your farm um, credit system. They got a farm credit system. They will do more lending on raw property. And a lot of times it takes a lot of more money to put down because they got to lessen the risk because all lending is risk assessment. So we're, we're talking about, are we talking about buying it or are we talking about the farm? They will, they will finance you to lease the own. They will finance you to lease. Well, it's basically like, like a mortgage. She said fake channel. <laughs> <laughs> New Orleans guy is halftime. Oh yeah, I know. Just have thank you for stopping in on. <laughs> <laughs> but but no, when you're dealing with lease to purchase, they, basically you have a owner. They own a piece of property or owners. Sometimes it could be family members. It right. could be more than one. Right. And then what you're doing, you're going into an agreement to say, hey, I'm putting so much down, and then we're gonna agree for the terms and the length. What I'm saying to be careful with that is make sure you run title searches, make sure the taxes are up to date, make sure there's no liens on it, make sure that those heirs can sell that property because sometimes it might be a trust. It might, it might not even be their quote property. Yeah, yeah their names are on it. Yeah. But if you look in, the, that's why I always say real estate attorney, real estate attorney. I'm not what that's the safest way because they can break all of that down and say, look, yes, their names are on this, but this is a trust. So when they pass, they siblings are going to get it and they siblings are going to get. It. And I my neighbor crossed the street from my first property. I never forget. He's still my friend to this day. I also mechanic. He paid for over seven years on the house across from me mm -hmm. and their family. Well, the people that there, which we both were neighbors. I knew those people. They moved, they retired and they moved to Arizona. Okay. And when they moved to Arizona, he was doing a lease to purchase. It was a 15 lease, 15 year lease to purchase. Okay. He got seven years into that. And guess what happened? The, the, the bank possessed the land. No, they actually, this guy retired. He owned that land. He turned around and sold it. No. What did he do? He didn't pay his taxes and mm. he took out a lien on the property. Mm. He used it for some collateral and he didn't pay it. Mm. So this guy, all those seven years, his money was gone. Gone. I mean, he, <laughs> he done built workshops out there. He done built, I mean, he laid concrete slabs. He done did everything, man. That's terrible, man. And I imagine so for something like that, you can take someone to court, but you know, in that case, the guy was bankrupt. The guy didn't have nothing. His wife died. My goodness. The guy didn't have anything. My goodness. 
so so that's that's what that's what I just want you to be just aware of that. Okay, so we talked about the scary part of it. Where okay, it, where can it play in your favor? Because I I'm sure I'm yeah. sure Farmer Q wants to know where are the advantages. Like we just completely probably scared this man and his his lovely wife <laughs> completely away from even thinking about leasing the own. Oh, let's 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 give him the far left now. All right, let's all right, the far right. So, Where could it be just like the best opportunity for a uh, first time or even second time uh, looking to be purchaser? Well, first of all, most people, that's how they purchase their land and, and it goes through perfectly fine. So I have to give you that shop factor first. OK. And, and most people that own land, they own multiple pieces of land and they're well established. They're well secure and they'll even draw up the papers with their attorneys. Most of them got attorneys and all that kind of stuff. So just to let you know. It, the majority of land that is bought a lot of times is bought through owner financing. So with that said, another thing, my credit could be shot. I could have some bumps in the road. Okay. But if I got some cash, right. So just say the, the, the piece of property costs a hundred grand. Okay. The banks might want 20%. Okay. This person might say, I want 10%. But my 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 um monthly payments may be higher for the first five years. Then once that's done, then it'll it'll shrink down to cover that twenty percent. Okay. You got flexibility. You can negotiate. You can right. work with that person. And then and then you got all those fees, the realtor fees, all that other stuff. It's gone. All that's gone. You don't even have to deal with all that um advertising percentage commission, ten percent, all of that. When you're dealing with 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 uh, owner financing. A lot of times they might even ask for your credit, but they might not even sweat that, you know. So so what it is, is here it is. I, I got my income tax check. I saved it for a few years. I got some money I came into. I want to buy some land. This is a great opportunity for you to go in and <clears throat> you can buy that piece of piece of property. Now, in the state of Florida, I'm going to tell you one key thing. If you're looking for land to build your credit. I can't speak to another state, but in the state of Florida, your land does not go on your credit, mm. even if you finance it through a bank. Mm. This is something where rich people can hide their assets and hide their wealth. Too. <laughs> <laughs> you won't see it. <laughs> so it don't count. It, well, I bet it doesn't count positively towards your credit, but I bet if you default, it'll all of a sudden show up on your credit, you know. Like some of these, um, yeah, yeah, I'm quite. Yeah. Well, there, there, there's ways they can get around that, but at the same time, you can build a relationship with those banks too, right? right. Because let, let me share it with my last property, okay? A classic example: uh, the economic downturn went down. I had a foreclosure. Uh, the foreclosure, I lost everything. I lost my rental property. I lost my home, my main home, and I was out of work for a while. I moved back to the state of Florida. And when I moved back to the state of Florida, I said, I got to get in cheap. I got to get in cheap. Let me put me a mobile home or something, find me a piece of land and put me a mobile home. Now, this is, ties into what I said, do your planning, because that didn't happen. Because I didn't understand about the zoning in Leon County, because Leon County said, you're not putting up a mobile home. You're not putting up this. You're not putting up that where I bought that land. But I bought the land first. Right. But go back to the financing. I had some cash, but I didn't have credit. Right. So I wrote a three-page letter explaining my process, explaining my, my situation. That's I reached out to a Northwest Florida Credit Union. Okay. I sent it to the to the president of the credit union. He he one thing about relationships. When you have relationships and bank banking is all about relationships. Sure is. Some people think it's all about credit. Uh, it's about risk and relationship. So if you got a good relationship with a lending or someone high level into the banking. Guess what you can do? You can talk and communicate with them, and then they can speak on your behalf to the board. Right. That's and right. then the board, he spoke in behalf of my board, and I gave him an offer they couldn't resist. I put well over twenty percent down That's for the right. property, and then I, I went through my list of my my trials, and he, I reached him. Yeah. And yeah. by me reaching him, he talked to the board, and they gave me a loan right. for for the property. Right. Which I couldn't even buy a car, a piece of paper at that time, a piece of tin foil. But right. I was able to get the land, so it is I mean, crazy. And that, right, and that and that's what's important, you know, down to those relationships to the point where you may have cut 
you may have cut his grandmother's grass for five years or <laughs> redid the landscaping bed mm -hmm. on his aunt's house or something like that. So that goes really, really far. And I want to touch on one more topic related to this land and then we're going to shift gears people unless you have some questions drop them in the comments below now before we jump to the next topic but um love knows she made a really solid comment i'm not sure if this is the around the way she was going with it but regardless it just reminded me of something one thing that we haven't touched on with this land we went over some really good points that if you play this back you'll get some you get some things that just make you start asking the right questions. I have a I have a mentor, and um, you know, she, you you meet the right people at the right time in your life. I promise you, it's not by coincidence. But I was at a point in my career that I was jaded about a few different things, right? And we all get jaded at work. And I met this mentor that, it, what I mean, jaded is like I stopped asking and doing things that I knew that I probably should have, but you know, for whatever, for reasons that aren't important tonight, mm -hmm. I just got jaded on them. But she had this one thing that she kept repeating to me while she was my mentor, and still today to this point, I consider her my mentor, even though she doesn't supervise me anymore. Chief, she would always say, ask the right questions, right? So we gave these people enough information to ask the right questions. Understand that you need to be asking the right questions to get the proper information that you need. The next thing I'm going to step into is, love note, she said, um, make sure you can grow something on the land. And I'm going to take that statement and drive it a little deeper is getting historical data yeah. on that land. Because yeah. a land, a piece of land that you... Talking about Georgia, right? We're going to pick yeah. on Georgia for a minute, yeah. right? Uh, Love No said Georgia is raggedy. <laughs> hey, ease up, ease up, Love No. Maybe, 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 maybe Central and North, North Georgia, but now South Georgia. <laughs> so we can grow food down there. With Georgia, with Georgia being raggedy, right? Um, this is what I want to say. How many people have seen those properties where there's like equipment? spread out from the past 10 to 20 yeah. 20 years, uh, one to two, three generations where the freaking oil pan done fell out of the car and, you know, or maybe people were doing things on that land that they didn't have any business doing. That's when you really want to get out there, see what the city has on records. And I'd say a step further would be yeah. it, is is uh going and asking the people that live in that area. Yeah, you know that's your that's your best that's your best. Let me tell you, that's <laughs> your best resource. Everything like like I'm not trying to get off subject, but I'm gonna I'm gonna share with you something What's I shared up, with you about this guy. Doing? But your neighbors, if you buying property, the people around there, they can give you all the scoop on what's going on oh, for as far as what is what happened and. Who 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 owned the land and they'll go another generation, another generation. But let me share a story about this guy, okay. a guy that I knew. He bought a piece of property, prime property. It was on a major thoroughfare. He got out of a good deal. But okay. that's 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 one I keep saying a good deal. Just just you need to do a CMA, a, com a comparative market analysis with a realtor, or you can go on the property um, tax appraisers website and you can look at recent sales and most in most well-established cities and counties you can you can look at the previous sales in that area but this guy bought a piece of property acres Sanford and, Sons, yeah. and he it, the property looked fine they had well-grown trees but he didn't know prior back in probably the 40s and the 50s they ran a shop they had uh, oil, uh, uh, oil milling. They had um, gas station. They ran tractors. They did tractor repair, and a lot of stuff got buried. Mm. And they did not unbury those petroleum containers for the gas. Yep. All of that stuff. The tanks he got still ready. Down there. He got ready. Did the soil testing. He trying to get some other stuff going because yeah. sometimes. Yeah. You got to do those geological survey. They might say, oh, we need to do a geological survey. That's a flag. If they start asking old questions, <laughs> then all of a sudden it became a perpetual cycle where guess what? EPA came in there and shut everything down. Mm. Right now, 
my wife and I, we just rolled out there not too long ago. And there's a over one story mound of extract that they pull from the earth. And it's been there for well over 15 years. And he still to this day can't do anything with that property. Money. And money. I don't even want to talk about how much money he had to sink into there to get that done because they held him accountable. Right. They didn't hold the previous people accountable. Right. They held him accountable. That's insane. Yeah. 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 That's insane. And he can't do anything with that property. They, yeah. they, I think, I think, it, I forgot, I think it's past his lifetime before anything could be built on that property. My God. So, oh my goodness. I mean, what do you do? I, you hit the reset button. I mean, or go find the person who sold the property to you. <laughs> That's what I would do. I'm going to let the turf come in the fine. <laughs> and I have a special set of skills now. Let me <laughs> you might sleep, but it's not going to be tonight. <laughs> it's going to be tonight, bro. My goodness. Okay, cool. So there you go. Um, and of course, I'm going to recommend which he which he mentioned. Um, if you're buying if you're buying property, if you're buying property to start uh, gardening, homesteading, uh, lawn care, you know, lawn care enthusiasts, you're about to get your lawn right. Doesn't matter. It should always start with a soil test. Yeah. Now, and I will say again, I've said it in the past, the soil test is so you understand the soil you're working with. I'm not saying get the soil test and go get all the chemical on the counter and throw it at your yard. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying you getting that soil test is no different from you figuring out the historic data in that area that you're growing in. Okay. That at least, you know, why you're not having your plants develop roots. Mm -hmm. You can go about amending that and fixing it however you want but maybe it will shift your gears as far as what first crops you'll be putting into the ground. And I'm gonna show you a little bit of what I'm talking about. I was talking to a good friend the other day about my new tactics. Well, not new ta tactics that I've learned, very old tactics that I'll be applying whenever I figure out where the heck I'm going. Cause I still don't know y'all. We still don't know y'all. I'm just like a hurry up and wait type situation. I'm still waiting. Figure out where we're going. Where's Florida. turf therapy going? Florida. Florida. <laughs> you said Florida. Uh, Florida was on the list, so it could be possible. I highly doubt it, but you know, <laughs> I could I could end up somewhere down in the panhandle. Who knows? We got Georgia on the list, Texas is on the list, um, Spain is on the list, uh, oh. Virginia is on the list, Missouri's on the list. This is the life of an active duty service member, people. And I just sit here and I wait and I don't make any important life decisions until I figure out where I'm going and then, then I go from there. Um, the taxes, the taxes are, are good in Florida though. Yeah. Oh, taxes is good out there. Well, taxes, um, you know, most military friendly places. I forgot. I because, forgot. because I was injured. Um, I, I, I have a pretty good deal with most state taxes when it comes to the land, especially yeah. Texas. That's why I wanted to get back to Texas. Cause uh, I'd have been, it's, life was going to be real good in Texas, but you know, it's neither here nor there. So as we shift gears, like I wanted to, unless you had something you wanted to say on that topic before we wrap it up and well, shift good. gears. Good. You good? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So I want to know what is Eco cooking up for the 2021 season? What's he working on? What can we expect? And just really give this, give you an opportunity to kind of plug yourself plug any things that you're looking for. What can we expect from you this season? You you do a little bit of lawn care. You yeah. do a little bit of gardening. I like all of it. You know, you do a lot of um, uh, ASMR uh, cinematic type <laughs> videos where you're just enjoying nature. I dig hey, all hey. that. What's to expect from you here in the near future? Well, I definitely want to grow more, of course. And, and I'm addicted to right now... Um, Gigi, she she's influencing me like we got too much grass in our backyard. <laughs> and I definitely want to increase our production. So we're going to be going on some journeys with that. I definitely want to reach out to some of my landscaping. I want to expand kind of what I'm doing because I'm eco neighbor. And the whole thought behind eco neighbor, just to give you kind of a little background, the whole concept of the name, not just me. I'm Rob. I'm Robert. But 
I'm your ego neighbor. I call him Major because it'd be weird <laughs> to say Rob the Rob. Plus, I think he got a super dope name, last name, especially Major. Like, yeah. imagine, like, if I joined the Army, there'd be two ranks I had to have if I joined the Army with your last name. It would be Sergeant, actually, yeah. like, Sergeant, E5 yeah. Sergeant. So you'd have to call me Sergeant Major. That would be dope without even actually being Sergeant Major. <laughs> and then Major, I would want to be Major Major. Like I would want to like cross over into the officer side, become a major, and then you have to call me major major. My bad, I digress. No, you, you, <laughs> my, 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 my dad, God rest my dad and my um my um uncle, they were both vets and one in Vietnam, both of them in Vietnam, but they 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 enjoyed that blessing with the uh, last name of major. But yeah, anyway, I I would like to just uh I want I I, I want to go back to where we are all neighbors. And we, we are all a part of the ecosystem. That's right. And we all contribute. So actually, we are all eco neighbors. And I just want to just kind of just expand that idea, that whole process, and get people to want to grow, to want to be conscious, aware of what's around them. So I'm going to be planning more. I, I love nature. I'm going to be going a little bit off the beam path. We're going into some of these um State of Florida has some beautiful state parks. I want to share some of the state parks, uh, landscaping and beaches and different stuff. Like I just want to share more of the environment and our connection to the environment. So I'm going to be tying in some things to kind of connect us not only to our garden. Yeah, we start off in our own backyards, our own front yards, our own. If we don't have that, our patio, our living room space. I've I, I seen even beautiful gardens in the bathrooms. I don't care where you are, but I want to show the impact where it's not just, it starts with us and then we expand and we just grow and we make this whole, this living world, no matter where you are in the world, we are all neighbors and we all connected to the same environment. So that's kind of like what I want to kind of extend and push on towards. I like it. And we got a grow off. So I don't know if you ever heard of a grow off, but I got a friend somewhere, somewhere around here that's going to help me. Yeah, yeah, he, he hanging around. He like hanging around. He from Georgia too. You know? <laughs> But um, he likes hanging around every now and then. And then I hang around him every now and then. So, um, you know, I got to go back to my roots because, you know, I grew up in Georgia anyway. Mm -hmm. So, so you know, I got a friend to kind of help me with um, we got a little something going on right now with um, it's called a grow off. It's almost like a cooking off, but we're growing plants. Plant. And we go, yeah, it's a grow off. So, yeah. so, so instead of instead of cooking meat and instead of cooking uh, the hog on the grill, we we what we doing? We we cooking up some vegetables. We cooking up some flowers. Yeah. We cooking up a few plants. Right. And and what we do, we're having a friendly. This is friendly. This is nothing like like we might shoot a little back and forth here and there, but it's all good. And what we're trying to do is um we're just trying to share it with everybody. And we got a few competitors now. We yeah. got a few competitors. They got a few. Yeah, we got a few yeah. competitors. And the grow off. This is the first thing you say. They say, broke farmer, where you at? <laughs> we got a few competitors. And we're going to jump in those competitors. But before we jump into the competitors, I want to go ahead and bring our special guest on because I think this is a really good time to go ahead and bring in our special guest. So right, let me know if y'all ready to bring in this special guest. Are y'all ready for the special guest to, to roll up in here? This is my main man, your cousin, my cousin, his cousin, all of our cousins. We got our main man, Broke Farmer, 76. He's in the building. Give him a second, people. Let him get logged in. Let him yeah, he out there in the country, so you got to give him a few moments right now. Yeah, he give him a few moments. We're going to get Broke Farmer in here, and we're going to finish talking about this girl off. Because I think this is cool. I've never seen anything like this. Um, so I thought it would be cool. To, to bring these gentlemen on this platform so they can talk about it. Now you might not, you might be asking Turf, why are you not in the grow off? Why, why haven't you jumped in to steal another trophy? <laughs> hey, that's the only way you gonna get it. <laughs> the only way you gonna get it. My first place right here, you know, I figured, you know, I, I'll, I'll, I'll sit this one out and let, and let, uh, let the, let the older men have a have a shot. <laughs> hey, that's that's a, that's a good idea. That's hey, really hey, good hey, idea. hey, hey, hey! Remember, every move was a calculated step. <laughs> <laughs> Look, now I I don't know what everybody else doing for the, the 2021 grow out, but I know I'm winning. 
I, 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 I don't know how many cool ways to say it and, and go about <laughs> saying that. <laughs> but look, if, if, if the volume down on some of y'all, I <laughs> plan on winning. And that's all I need to be saying. <laughs> so, so Farmer Q, Farmer Q, I watched Farmer Q's video. He's coming at y'all with sweet potatoes. How you feel about that? Well, hey, Farmer I Q feel like that's the best thing for second place, man. <laughs> <laughs> that is great. That is great. I applaud. That is great. If I wasn't in there, Farmer Q would be the woman. I put the hand up right now. Oh, but that's, no. that's the second place. Oh, oh, okay, 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 okay. Oh. I mean, I. I yeah, my bad. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, it, I mean, I'm excited for it because it it's cold, and you know everybody stopped growing. That's Look, true. it's a challenge in itself. You talking about growing in the middle of winter right now, January? Exactly. That's what a mental challenge about? right there for me, mentally in my head. You know how cold it is outside right now? It's cold out there. Yeah, I gotta go get my pot. I gotta go get my container in a few moments. Yeah. Yeah. Keep okay, so yeah, like, before we get too far off talking trash and taking jabs, explain to the people what the grow, y'all finish explaining to them what the grow off is, its requisites, and then you can go ahead and let them know the people that's participating, feel free to drop the links in the description below. Uh, well, in the comments, not the description, in the comments below, but the floor is yours, gentlemen. Let, let these people know what the grow off is all about. Yeah, well, you got it, bro. Well, I'm gonna start it off, and, and when it get to the technical part, I'm gonna let Eco take it from there. <laughs> but it originated as a conversation, and the conversation kept evolving and evolving to the point where we say, "Hey, let's see who the better man is." Let's the see conversation who between you and Eco. Yeah, that's that's the original conversation. Okay. But you know who brought up the money part? You know, it wasn't you? Because you broke. I mean that's that's the only way it's gonna be fair. I mean we know we know if it, if it's a money situation on growing, yeah, you see them growing all these big beautiful uh, elephant ears and all these beautiful sits. I can't afford that stuff, buddy. Do you see what I grow out of? If you go back to my first video, I'm growing in coffee cans, oh. coffee cans and old milk juice. Hey, he growing oh. up. Yep. He's growing. <laughs> well, well, you know that that's the crazy thing about um bro. He, he, he has a gift for gab, but at the same time, uh, you know, he don't, don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. He have his successes. He has his successes, but uh, it's clear that broke got more money than I got because most people that say they broke, they got money. Mm. But because my yeah. brother swear he broke all the time too. And that little fool, I know he got some papers. And we know it. We know it. We know it, but we ain't going there. But this is, these are the rules. These are the rules. You get one, Container. One container. It, it could be any size. Any size. Yep. And then the goal is it's not, you don't have to spend $20. You don't have to spend $20. You can spend anything under $20. So it's $5, $6, $15, whatever. Right. So the limit is $20. Mm -hmm. And then the key is you can grow whether flowers, vegetables, you can grow whatever you want to grow. But it can't be, you can't pull something out of your garden that you already started. It gotta be something new, a new introduction to your, your growing. So you gotta go and you gotta go and either purchase. Now we got some, we got some side winders. We got Texas in the house. These side winders, we got people like um, Back to Our Roots Homestead. They like to kind of side wine and they, they, they got money. They got resources. And so they combining their resource, but I ain't throwing no jabs over there <laughs> because everything Texas do, they do, they do big. And then they say they're gonna bring, they're gonna bring no, anyway. So with that said, then we got somebody smart like um Farmer Q Farmer that you know he had some little starters and he was, cool. kinda, he was gonna kind of jab a little something in there too. You know, all these all these cats they they be creative what they're doing, but the whole goal was. We want to show other people that it doesn't take a lot to get started planning. We want to we want to just show people that look, you can have fun. I don't care whether it's in a milk jug. I don't care what it's in. You can grow something in your very own home. You can grow it in your backyard, your patio, whatever. 
I've been in all of those environments. I, I, I remember I was in an apartment and my patio, all I could do was do like this. And I, and I still grew something. So we just want to encourage people to grow. And so basically it started on January the 1st and we're going to have everything submitted by the 27th of this month. You got to drop your last video. Then we're going to go live and we're going to ask everybody to go to our live, everybody to participate. Our participants right now runs down Broke Farmer 76. Yes. GG Nationals Homestead, Lion Crest Outdoors Garden, mm -hmm. Back to Our Roots Homestead, mm -hmm. the Bull Garden. We got the Bull Garden in the house. Bull Bull yeah, we got the Bull oh. Garden in the house. Okay. We got Best Yet Journey. And they all oh. are going to bring. They're going to bring all that. Wait a minute. Cubs, too. What I left out cuz. No, uh, no, no, no. It's a, it's one more. I left out one. Last night. Last night entry. Yeah, that was best yet. No, no, we got one more last night. I apologize. I, I'm Gigi, looking at my notes. Gigi, Gigi claiming the crown. She already claimed the crown on y'all. Uh uh, she's a biter. She's a biter. <laughs> she's a biter. She's a biter. <laughs> You know, she learned, she learned, she learned from the rest. So, so to reap 65. That's what it is. Oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. to reap 65. She's in, she growing from sea, she way up north. But she said, I just want to do it for the fun. I want to do it for the fun. And that's all we asking. You know what I'm saying? We might be talking a little smack, but we, but we love each other. Yeah. We're just having fun. We encouraging everybody in the gardening community. Look, let's let's keep growing. Let's put something in the dirt while it's cold. I mean, hey, I'm, you might see me grow something. I might see you grow something that you didn't think you could grow in one. Mm. So each one, teach one. And this is a, this a community. In a community, you help each other. So we're going to help each other, but I'm still going to win and be number one. <laughs> <laughs> so he said, I'm going to inspire them, and I'm going to take the bag and leave y'all empty hands. Yes. Yeah, yeah. he's he going he to be just like them Falcons. That's all I got to say. <laughs> Shots fired already. That's what I'm but talking no, about. You, I mean, everybody in the garden community, the, the whole point really is to build everybody up and help everybody out. And, that's, and a good, that's a good that's a good mantra to have for sure. And if you ain't in the garden community, it lets you know that hey, it ain't I that. see you in the backyard, I see you in the backyard. It, it's as easy as putting a seed in the dirt. That's it. That is is that easy. And anything more than that, one pot, you can get it done. Come on. One yeah. pot. Yeah, so I, I I think what these what these gentlemen are doing is 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 inspiring for the people who have never grown before. You can see what you could pull off with a twenty dollar container. Um, you can see what you could pull off when you have limited resources. That's why I was inspired by a man, Broke Farmer seventy um, six. And, and when you go over to his channel, I'm gonna tell you this: you may expect <laughs> something but you cannot predict what you're gonna see. And I mean that in the best way possible. What you're gonna find is someone who is transparent. What you're gonna find is someone who is authentic. What you're gonna find is someone who does not care. He's gonna be the type that talks trash about himself before you talk trash about him. Can't you see it? It's in the name, Broke Farmer 76. Before you call me broke, yeah. I'm gonna call myself broke and then still I'll grow you. That's why you know, I had to pick my man Eco for, for the win. I'm, I'm, I'm rooting for you, but I'm concerned because we are literally in the broke realm. And, you know, from, to the way it looks to me, them size of them lemons you working with out there, Eco, you got businesses and whatnot. Look, it, I feel like it's been a while since you've seen Broke Broke. So um, Broke Farmer already has the upper hand because the name of his channel is Broke Farmer 76. He's still living live doing this thing in the broke realm. So, um, go I don't even have to say nothing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's in the name. I mean, to be honest, you're kind of putting yourself out there, bro, because if you don't win this, why am I coming to your channel after this? You know, like, like you supposed to be the broke farmer. You supposed to well, show me. <laughs> you don't hey, come to hey. the channel, because you, you got to hear what I say after I lose. <laughs> That's just as good as acceptance speech I'm going to have when I win. <laughs> The champ. He already wrote it in there. The hey, 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 I want to say one thing, Turf. That's that's a beautiful soliloquy, whatever you just gave. <laughs> um, but I just want to tell you this. 
uh, 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 once you've been broke, you never forget what it feels like to be broke. That's true. And, and that's yeah. telling me that's telling me you probably haven't felt broke, but so you can't understand what I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> but with that said, with that said, I'm just saying this right here. You know, I am not by no means laying down. He challenged me. I say, I welcome it. I welcome it. Yeah. I welcome it. I'm gonna tell you when I experienced broke, and it was it was a. Uh... You're right. I haven't. It, there's two reasons why I haven't really experienced broke. For one, the first time I was actually broke in my life, I didn't know I was broke. My parents, they did a very good job of making sure we. I had no idea that I was broke. You know why? Because they made sure that I had the things that I need to go to school and win every day. Right. So I don't remember being broke as a kid because if you ask me, I didn't know I was broke because my parents did their thing. Shout out to the parents. The second time that I was actually broke was when it was by fault, my own fault, when I first joined the US military and I was living paycheck to like three days before paycheck. And the only reason why I did that is because I could just go to the DFAC. So, you know, I would spend all my money <laughs> every weekend. We rent a car, spend all our money, party down in San Antonio, Texas, right? It was my old stumping grounds. And then when I ran out of money, I didn't have to worry about anything because I knew I had somewhere to sleep. And I knew I had something to eat. All I had to do was go to the DFAC. So you, you're right. You're right. I have not been under the pressure of being real broke as an adult in my lifetime. I've been blessed. But, but, but broke, <laughs> I ain't, broke ain't what everybody think broke is. That's true. Because we keep telling y'all that broke line of y'all, he got money. Watch. Broke <laughs> up. Oh, he what? gonna pull up with the day. Hey, 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 look at his screen, man. Mine all fuzzy. Oh, He's all yeah, clean. Look at <laughs> his screen crispy. No, 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 no. hell, man. I need a haircut. He, he good. Got the juices and berries a, in the I'm beard. A... Look like you got a fresh lineup. <laughs> no, no, no. Come on now. I am a no. semi-professional YouTuber. So <laughs> I come equipped with lighting equipment and, and the setup. That, that, that is what I do. I'm, I'm a YouTuber. So, so before I cut this on, I put that light on and that light on, and I got my my phone on my ring light, and then I made sure that my head didn't go against the color of the wall. <laughs> you see it blending in? <laughs> you good. You good. No, I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah. So, bro, what, what are your ambitions outside of uh, the grow off that you've initiated? You challenged the entire community, uh, passively, aggressively uh, challenged the entire community to grow off with you. Uh, outside of that, what, what are your, because you just hopped on YouTube. You ain't been on here, what, six months, if that? Two months. With two months, two months. Been on YouTube for two months. Um, what's Smoke. your plans in 2021? You've already learned quite a bit in the past two months from what I've seen. Uh, it's all, I got on it's a handy day in a notepad. It's a handy day in a notepad. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to tell you something about Broke real quick. Listen, he everybody cousin for real. Look, I got on the phone with Broke it's probably about a week ago. Never been on the phone with this man in my entire life. I got on the phone with him when I hung up. We was on the phone for like four hours, people. Four Good hours. Good people, man. Good Didn't people. Didn't skip a beat. You know, it's a, it's like, a, we talking like we knew each other our whole life. But what you got coming up, brother? Well, I mean, I learned a lot. And it's, it was still some things that I, I was scared to to reach out to and try to do. Mm -hmm. So I've been listening to you, listening to the eco and some more people. So I'm gonna expand. I haven't grown anything in the ground yet. I mean, I got my fruit trees in there, but I'm as far as vegetables and stuff like that. So me and eco was talking about how I could, you know, try to mend the soil a little bit. And and for everybody who's in the chat that hear me saying something that don't sound correct, <laughs> it's probably not correct. But <laughs> When I say a man, I wasn't even sure I was using that correctly, but I just, I, I stepped out there on faith to see how it worked out. But look, hey, I'm going to put down leaves and make a raised bed from the ground and try to mend my soil and go from there. But just just open up in general and try to grow new things like beans. I'm, I'm scared to grow lima beans and whole beans because I killed so many. I mean, I think they got a warrant out for me right now. I mean, I was killing beans the whole summer, man. So I'm gonna try that again. Summer? That's rough, man. I'm <laughs> killing them. 
I mean, if you watch one of my videos, I had an RIP session at the beginning of the video for all the stuff I killed. So <laughs> I was singing Little Boys and Men to go with it, you know. <laughs> little Boys and Men. I got to go <laughs> so, check that one up. I'm going to dig that one up. So I'm just going to try more stuff, man. I, I ain't going to be scared this year. I'm, I'm going to uh, try. If it don't work out, I'm going to tell you it don't work out. And I'm going to ask for help in the comments. I mean, you go to some people's channel and they telling you how to do stuff. I might be asking for your help in the, in the chat. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, it's a different kind of challenge. It's more of a gardening vlog than a tutorial on how to grow. Right. And that's just being real. Showing you, you're showing the people your life, trying to get it done the cheapest way possible without knowing anything right. going into it. Killing beans in the middle of summer. That is a feat. That, that, <laughs> that to me, that's as impressive as me killing a three-year-old peach tree within four months. Like, I... <laughs> I did that. I killed the whole tree. Um, he said he thought amend was amen because he had faith. Stop playing. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't think that. Ain't think that. You, go, you ain't think that. Don't do that. I didn't say that. Oh, okay. Farmer Q got you good. Hey, Farmer Q, Farmer Q came in. On that one. <laughs> he came in hot with that one. Um, My God. Hey, life. Yeah. OD ish chick. Your, your fake channel, you funny. Your fake channel has been up for six months. I'm going to check you out tonight. I'm going to check you out tonight. Um, oh, hey, hey get, hey, hey, get ready for her too, What's man. Up, Pitt? growing Pitt, like crazy. Pit stop, kitchen and garden. Hey, how Pitt stop. Yeah. Oh, oh, hey, uh, Mr. Therapy, can I say one more thing? Uh, Mr. Therapy. <laughs> yeah, of course. Look, the floor is yours, now, First off, I appreciate you lying me on your channel like this. I really appreciate that. Hey, thank you. For I mean, me. you didn't have to do it. I mean, there's no reason on earth for you to let a guy like me on your channel. <laughs> but I appreciate it. Hey, Amen. Hey, Amen. Hey, if you haven't got the merch yet, go to Teespring's Turf Therapy. It's beautiful <laughs> merchandise. If you love YouTube and you love your favorite YouTube, go get you some merch. Look at the merch. Get you some merch. Because I know Turf a good guy. He ain't gonna he ain't gonna push his merch like that. But so I'm gonna push it. <laughs> I appreciate that, bro. I appreciate that. Yeah, if you want to check out the merch and you catching the replay, I'll throw it in the description of this video. Also, <laughs> you'll be able to find Eco's link and Broke Farmer. It wasn't in the initial posting. I left it off because I wanted to be some alert behind the curtains type thing. Didn't didn't want you to know who I was bringing on. So we got a good question, uh, fellas. What is our grow zone? So for me, my grow zone is 7A in Maryland. Um, although I'm probably truer to a 7B because I'm so close to the coast, I stay way warmer than I'm supposed to. Um, but I still have to deal with those cold temperatures. They do sweep in. So it, it restricts me with the plants that aren't frost hardy. So you'll see me doing some weird things that you would probably think I couldn't pull off in a 7A, but keep in mind that I got this weird microclimate right here, east of the uh, coastal shoreline. So I'm east of 95 where no matter where you're at on the map, if you're east of 95, your, your, your weather is gonna be different than people who are west of 95, just because of that coastal plain. Uh, I open up the eco. Eco, what grows on you, and brother? Like uh, uh, before, before we get off on um, um, turf, you still gonna uh, help me with my my grass, right? Yeah, yeah, I got. I you. want them stripes. I got. Okay. <laughs> I, I got want you. Stripes, You're in seven A Maryland too. Sweet. Okay, the everyday life of the. Okay, I'm I'm really looking forward. Okay, Kwamzi, you're in seven A too. All right. Yeah. Um, I'm, in, I'm, I'm in. I'm in eight B. Eight B. He in eight B. That's I mean, I mean. A, A, stand up. Everybody in the chat and A, A, no. say what's up in the chat. A, A. I think 8B A, 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 and 9A, depending on your location in the States, I think are the best grow zones. Hands down. Because you get, you, get, you get the best of both worlds with those zones. Look at the side eye. Look at the side eye. You get enough chill hours for a lot of things <laughs> that you can't get chill hours for in the 9B, right? And then you stay warm enough to pull off soft subtropical plants. So I think that's in the realm of like where you get the best of both worlds. That, that to me, to me. I say that knowing that I'm not moving. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you all this disclaimer. All of my tropicals are burnt. Mm. It's just knowing which tropicals. When I was in Georgia, I grew tropicals, but it's just varieties that you grow 
And and you and and I know I know some some people say you don't want to baby it, but you're gonna to have to baby some tropicals. Mm -hmm. But hey, the, you can't do it. What you got? No, bro? no, no. I was just looking. At somebody say, "Hey, hey, I'm sorry." Hey. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Distraction. <laughs> Distraction. <laughs> Squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's another thing he'll tell you too. Bro can tell you he's a 40 year old kid. Um, hey, look, and I love life, dude. I love heart. life in the heart. You say, except those bugs in the hotter zone. Some of those critters are terrifying. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's, that's true. why I have, to, I have to grow in the winter. I have to grow more in the winter than I can in the summer, in the spring. You know, and that would be my go-to, too. That winter, my winter game would be strong in any zone, set, uh, 8A or below. My winter game would be strong because yeah. you guys can still pull off a lot if you make the investments to, you know, hoop houses or some type of uh materials that where you can protect and keep things a little warmer for sure a a deep tonight uh okay yeah y'all deep hey hey stand up y'all y'all knew i was gonna be here hey 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 you know you know how country folk you know how country folk do they call all their kin folks say y'all hop online hop online tonight because i'm gonna be online i'm gonna be online tonight i done made it bro <laughs> hey i'm hey you playing but i got 16 aunties that I, when I posted on Facebook, that came on over. <laughs> oh, there you go. Hey, aunties. Thank you. Hey, auntie. <laughs> hey, auntie. Appreciate y'all. Hey, I'm coming by to get some collard greens and some cornbread. Yeah, and Georgia is not raggedy. I I rebuke that. I'm not I'm not accepting that. <laughs> I, I rebuke I rebuke that too. <laughs> well, look, I mean, it's like it is a uh, state. It's some raggedy parts. But yeah, that's true. There's some real there. raggedy parts up here in Maryland. I, I man. It gets oh, and I, is it okay if I say this, Turk? What's going on? I, I was in cursing, so no, I ain't cursing. Hey, right. hey, all y'all internet cousins out there. I know. I don't know if you can say internet cousins on your channel or not. I'm just trying to be respectful. I don't. I don't know what's. <laughs> I didn't read the bylaws before I came into the Zoom. <laughs> so you didn't read that email he sent you? You good? What email? Yeah, <laughs> bylaws. With all the bylaws. <laughs> With all the bylaws. Hey, you you just saw the picture with your 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 icon was on top of it. <laughs> I, and I said I'm in the game. <laughs> so it doesn't matter. Oh, so it is okay. Okay. Yeah, hey, you good. You're good. I just had to check. Alarms were going off. Yeah, it's cranberry Kool-Aid. Sure. Don't worry about it. Wanted to make sure I was good. But um, yeah, go ahead for go for it, bro. But I mean, yeah, I'm just enjoying some wine and, and letting everything go. But no, I just want to shout out all my internet because I'm looking up and I'm looking down to see who in the chat, you know. Just say what's up to them, man. You know, collard green going good, <laughs> mustard green going good. Got some whole cake cornbread coming. He it's said, what's up? Oh, I do. I got something that I want to do before I leave that my wife just came and reminded me of. I was waiting for him to pop up in the chat and he might be silently watching. My dude, uh, you guys remember when I got my trophy, right? For that wine off, the little wine off we did when I brewed up some wine. And uh, my brother Jay Binion, the uh, first loser in that match, um, <laughs> he sent, me, <laughs> he sent yeah. me a nice little package. Um, and let me just make sure I can read this out loud. Hey, this, this the same brother be taking them notes too now? Yeah, he be taking it. You, you, better, you better get real now. You better bring your A game because he coming for you. Okay. All right. Cool. Thank you for all you do for the lawn and gardening community. Your knowledge and wisdom surpasses your age. You are truly an inspiration and your genuine care for everyone you come into contact with through your videos is very humbling. I'm sending over some nice deliciousness from my garden from the summer. It's a little on the sweet side. Hope you enjoy it. So Jay Binion, Number two. See, he even put number two because he know, he know he number two. <laughs> <laughs> he just wrote it in a lie. Oh my goodness. He knew I was going to take it. Look at this. This is crazy. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Right? That's nice. That's nice. Hey, hey, I got mine in some purple bubble. I mean, some green bubble wrap. What's up with that? We're green. Oh, well, listen, I got you next time. That was <laughs> Whoa, look how clear that is. What? Taste it, taste it. You can read that. Through it. That's the first book that was over here. I grabbed. You sure he number two? This ain't rigged, is it? <laughs> what? He's number two? He's number two. 
What? You see that clarity? Hey, it's, it's all about the taste, though, at the end of the day. So I'm going I'm to take a swig of this while I'm with y'all, just so I can see what's going on with it. It's nice and chilled because it was uh, on the porch. Lovely. Oh. Little, even though they deliver stuff on Sundays. But um, cool. yeah, I got a little packet today. Yeah, you know. I'm, I'm getting another one for my wife because she's the one who reminded me. So <laughs> she's been waiting to see what the tastes like. So Jay Binion, this to you. The color is amazing. Very little sediment. I'm jealous, Terry. I'm jealous. Jealous? Yeah. It smells uh, a little nutty. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> Did I have it in the fridge? No, I didn't have it in the fridge, but it was it was on the outside fridge. It y'all y'all too much. I'm sorry, y'all. Oh, that's not sweet. That's perfectly balanced. See, he's trying to undersell himself. I know that technique. You write something bad about it. Before you give the person the opportunity to say something bad about it, but that's not sweet to me. I tell you what, the the, the red wine that you seen me sipping tonight, I made that batch and I made that a little too sweet, and that to me is a little too sweet for my taste. But this right here, this is perfectly balanced. What you think, babe? Yeah, it's a winner. Yeah, it's a winner. Hey, you did your thing on this. Too bad you didn't uh, enter that into the contest. Anyway, oh. uh, shifting gear. <laughs> mm. mm. yeah, <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate you, bro. Hey, I got to put on my turf. <laughs> Roll after that jab right there. Oh. <laughs> oh. Thank you so man. When y'all smelling the wine, <laughs> now this fella roll. <laughs> roll that great smell the same. <laughs> <laughs> You said what, bro? What'd you say, man? Look, all the Stella Rolls I ever drunk smell the same. Stella Rolls. <laughs> I don't always drink wine, but I'm, when I'm drinking wine, it's Stella Rolls. <laughs> you about to make me cry. Hey, that, hey, hey, bro, that's the consistency, man. <laughs> hey, I saw, I saw him shaking around. <laughs> Mr. Ice, with some ice. <laughs> that's terrible. But Jay, if you catch this playback, brother. Listen, that's fire, and I got something special coming your way. Give it about two, three months. Listen, I got over 20 gallons just of brewing right now. Oh. Underneath the stairs right now, 20 gallons. And we about to hop in the beer, ladies and gentlemen. Matter of fact, I need, I need help figuring out which one I'm going to do first. <clears throat> so I got two different choices, right? Let me make sure. Tell them, put it in the chat which one they yeah. choose. Oh, uh, let's see. So I got this duple box. Right. If you yeah. if you're from Germany, you know Germany, Duppelbach, right? Uh, it's got like a smoky flavor. It's a dark beer. Seeing if that's the one I should do first. Or my wife and I, when we went to London, when I was stationed in Germany, uh, we fell in love with this beer, and we made sure we drank it at every pub we went to. And it's going to be uh, ESB, right? ESB. So. Um, I'll make a community post about it. Of course, you can drop your input in the chat today and let me know, but I'm gonna make a community post and ask y'all, which one did y'all prefer me to do? I was supposed to do them today, but something came up. Life is always changing, moving fast, but uh, I didn't do it today, which means you guys can participate in which one I do first. So let me know which one you wanna see first. We're gonna brew up some beer. I told y'all I would do that about two months ago. Yep. So we're going to brew some beer and see how that goes. And that'll be pretty much a wrap on most of the brewing because right when this is done, we'll be in full swing for gardening and lawn care again. I um, like, I like, I like the ESB. Eco sw sweeps broke. <laughs> Eco sweeps broke. All right. He, we got one vote for the ESB. Oh, that beer kit. You doing it, sir. Yes. Yeah. I got the beer kits. Um, no offense. John Legend, DMX. And T.I., all I want to know is, who's John Legend? You know, 
I want to know who's John Legend. And and uh, Kenny Cooper, long life. What's going on, Kenny? Got the most terrible accent. Whoa. Slash best, best accent. Whoa, Damn, I just caught that. <laughs> the game. Is that who we supposed to be? Who, who's that? <laughs> yeah, I think that's what he's saying. I think this is saying. This is John hey, Legend. Five foot five. John Legend, DMX, and Ti. I think that's what they just coined us. I don't oh, know oh, who's John Legend. So who, who DMX? Get at me, dog. <laughs> <laughs> I want some. I want some chaga. 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 I feel like I'm saying that wrong. Or or is that that uh, speak to talk text thing getting the best of you? I appreciate you guys. Thank you. What's that? What's that mean? I hope you didn't leave. Um, and Ravenel, uh, John Legend, DMX, Ti, you can't just drop something like that and leave the chat. <laughs> I need to know. I need to know who who you compare me to. Um, I don't know, dude. I'd rather be John Legend because I don't know. That's what I'm T. saying. I, DMX, I had a song about ten years. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, geez. yeah, that last John Legend album, man. I'm trying to tell you. Oh, he you did heard Chaga. Oh, you meant Chaga. We were talking about mushrooms. Oh, okay, chocolate mushrooms. Oh, I was reading somebody else's mail. That's what oh, I'm okay. okay. How about my, my business thing? Yeah, okay. That went over my head right there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so maybe they jumped out. Maybe they, I want to know the answer to that question. Oh, <laughs> okay, there we go. Jay Weez at three and one. It's the swag and the grammar, I think, broke for him. Oh, okay. That's what it is? I ain't catch no more comments, but I caught that one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they're mushrooms. What, yeah, they're what, gonna... swag, what swag broke got? I'm, I'm, I'm not a big hey, fan of mushrooms. First off, I am the official hooded gardener, the no sale to extended warranty, the family dollar fella, your boy broke farmer 76. Get at me. Really dollar too expensive, man. You mean Dollar Tree, right? Dollar Tree, get at me, boy. Only <laughs> <laughs> hey, really dollar be taxing. Hey. Hey, I told you ain't broke. I told you ain't broke, man. <laughs> right? That's like the Tarjay. <laughs> to Walmart, Family Dollar, to Dollar Tree. Come on, man. Hey, 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 he be sly stepping to Target. <laughs> so, hey, they, first off, they took our Target. We don't even have a Target in our city. Yeah. No but you was in there. But you was in there. And now you're in Kroger. So I know you got money. We go to Piggly Wiggly and Harvest. <laughs> all right, that's all we got, Kroger. I can't afford Publix. Publix will put you out of house and home. Good God. <laughs> Publix got that produce, though. Man. Yeah, if you want it fresh and you want it real without all that other stuff, there where you go. Loretta King, hi, how are you? Thank you for popping in. I hope you all are. You are John. I like that. Cool. So I don't care who, who I don't care whomever else, whatever else you are. What? So as long as I'm labeled with John Legend, I'm cool with that. That's not the first time somebody says something like that to me, too. Especially I get a lot of love this on beer your season for me right now. Y'all gonna see this beer like one more time, and then I gotta go back to work, so I'm gonna shave it. So, <laughs> but yeah, John Legend, I'll take that. His last album was dope. Um, yeah, that's all I got to say on that. I'll take John Legend all day. First time, have you heard John Legend guess. album? Uh, have I heard the John Legend album? Or yeah. have I heard a John Legend album? Either one. I mean, both. <laughs> both. What are you trying to say? You trying to say you got some pipes? You got some pipes I, on I could, dude, I can't name one John Legend song. Oh, you could, oh. Um, now, oh yes, I do. Uh, everyday people. I mean, uh, yeah. nope, can't even do one. <laughs> well, that's why you know him, and I imagine he's probably labeling you Tip because you got the hoodie on, and then and then Major Major's got to be DMX. That's I, I want to know am I the old DMX or the new DMX? We're gonna go with old, just for your sake. Okay, the, well, just, the new one. You, know, you ain't dropped a video <laughs> with you crying yet. Until you drop a video with you crying, we're gonna leave it at the old. <laughs> If you're crying now, I'm gonna have to give you the new. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Piggly Wiggler has <laughs> old meat deal, folk type. Yeah, ordinary, yeah. Ordinary people. Come on, man. Oh, that's what I was thinking. Bro. Ordinary people. No. I mean, listen, if you haven't seen, <clears throat> if you haven't listened to Bigger Love, I don't know what you're doing in your life. What you need to do is put on Bigger Love and dance with your lady in the middle of the living room tonight. Hey, hey, Tur. Tur. <laughs> <laughs> if you get to sing it again, I'm gone, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, uh, that uh, Ula, that Ula, Ula on the um, Bigger Love is my jam. Then my next one is going to be uh, that Slow Cooker, that, that Slow Cooker. 
when I listen to that song, I think of my wife because she it takes her two hours to do everything. Um, what? And then yeah, it takes her two hours to do everything, everything. Um, <laughs> but, and then I'm ready. I'm ready. Those three songs. Those are my those are my top three songs. Look for John Legend's bigger love uh, album that he just dropped. So hop over. Go to Maxwell. Maxwell, that's my dude too. Maxwell. Matter of fact, I don't play. I done threw away a video to the YouTube gods by using Maxwell's um um threw away a, a, a what I didn't use I used a a woman's worth. I don't think I oh. used crazy women. I used a woman's worth on my Mother's Day special last year when I was everyone likes to get their yard looking the best for uh, Memorial Day or mm -hmm. the 4th of July. I dedicated mine to my mom for Memorial oh. Day. So in the, now I don't think it was in the beginning, whenever I did my little B-roll, eye alignment, shots, <laughs> <laughs> whenever I, I did that, I tried to hang it, no, sorry. that Maxwell, that Maxwell was playing in the background. Not a lot of, and then I, and I put a little clips here and there for it as well. But that's what was in the background. So see, 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 I like I like that Southern soul. Give me a Calvin Richardson. I'm good. Oh, Calvin Richardson. That, you know, hey, I can get with it. I yeah. can get with all of it. You know, <laughs> matter of fact, that's what I listen to more often than not. R and B, smooth jazz. Um, I don't listen to a lot of rap music nowadays. I just not because I don't like it. It's just because I find that music at my age puts me in a certain mood. And if I listen to too much rap music. I'm not in the turf therapy kind of mood. That's just, Old school you know, I'll just leave it there. <laughs> I'll leave it there. Old school rap will make you mad too. If raw just, bass and easy cool. rock. Oh, <laughs> it, it uplift your whole day. Your Be whole going day. to work early in the morning, you sleeping, and it take two come on, you'll lose your goddamn mind. I can't <laughs> you. you will lose your <laughs> mind. What Farmer Q said, Maxwell the airwave impregnator. <laughs> As a kid, I sat and watched women lose it in the backseat. That's right. That's true. You are in rare form tonight, Q. <laughs> <laughs> Who that farmer Q? Hey, 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 we'd have brought out the other side. <laughs> hey, he is on it tonight. Q, he on it. I'm telling That's you. What I'm talking about. <laughs> super, super turf. Oh, the y'all uh, airwave, airwave impregnator. Airwave <laughs> impregnator. That's right. Okay, well, that's all I got for you guys. Um, I appreciate y'all hanging out with uh, myself, uh, Mr. Eco Neighbor, and of course, our cousin, your cousin, everybody cousin, Broke Farmer 76. Uh, Eco, let these people know where they can find you. Any parting words for the people? Go ahead and give it to them right now. You can find me definitely on YouTube. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Eco Neighbor. Google me, baby. You might find me. You might not. I'm still working on that. <laughs> but with that said, I just I just want everybody to keep on growing whatever you do, no matter whether you're growing plants, your mentality, your spirit, your soul. Just keep on growing. Right. <laughs> well, my, my turn. You got. Hey, yeah, Eagle, yeah, say okay. it right. Hey, say it how you say it in the video, though. <laughs> Grow. Bro. <laughs> I love it. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, you can find me on aisle six at your local Dollar Tree looking for some buckets <laughs> to put some plants in. <laughs> but if you can't find me on that aisle, go to Broke Farmer 76 on YouTube, and I'm probably doing a video by aisle four buying buckets at Dollar Tree. <laughs> okay, cool. I don't think we could get a better in this. <laughs> uh, I just subscribed to both DMX and TI's channel. <laughs> and this was great. I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> Santisha, thank you for being in the building. You wonderful, wonderful, wonderful soul. You, Santisha, big shout out to Santisha. Thank you for the love. I appreciate it. Well, as always, guys, it has been lovely hanging with you this evening. I hope um, that you got here when we was actually talking about something. You can learn something <laughs> if you didn't. Go ahead and run that back. We covered it in the first 30 to 40 minutes of the video. Give you a little background on Eco Neighbor. I'd like to thank both of you gentlemen for hopping on here with me tonight, spending your time uh, as much as an honor you think it was to be on this. 
with me. I think it was an honor to have you gentlemen. Like I said, I spend time watching an extensive amount of channels. A lot of times I silent watch because um, I know how it feels to see someone comment and then they stop commenting and then you think that they don't watch your footage anymore. So I like to just stay in the background because <laughs> there's a lot of channels out there and I can set them up on autoplay and I can like and let it play all the way to the end and I don't necessarily have to stop and comment on every single one. But I'm watching you, I promise you, I am. And if I'm not, it's just because I haven't found you yet. But uh, <clears throat> appreciate you guys coming on here, giving me some worthwhile topics to speak about, bro coming on, inspiring the people for the Grow Off 2021 Winter Edition, $20 limit, uh, email eco neighbor at, uh, what is it, eco neighbor at gmail.com? Yeah, yeah eco neighbor at gmail.com. I'll also drop that in the uh, description of this video as well. <laughs> and with that, you know, I hope you guys have a lovely, lovely week. If you got to go back to work this week, sorry for you. Um, <laughs> go ahead and get back to it, get on that grind. Um, and we'll see you next time. I, I should have a video coming out here in the near future. We're going to be talking about some beer brewing. Um, I'm going to show you uh, my, the last of my summer harvest that I have finished preserving and turning into some deliciousness. I'll be showing you that as well. Um, and that pretty much wraps it up for me, ladies and gentlemen. And once again, thank you, Rob, Eco Neighbor. Thank you, Ricky, my man, Broke Farmer 76. You all have a lovely evening. Thank you for checking in with us. I don't think there's anyone down here in the chat. Yep, people subscribing to y'all. Um, peace, peace, excellent live. You three gentlemen should do more together. The energy and knowledge are endless. Thank you for your time and energy. Have an amazing evening. You're very welcome, Stinku Puddle Ranch. I appreciate you. And that's it. All right, gentlemen. Y'all want to say bye to the people. <clears throat> peace and love. And thank you. Thank you, too. All right. All right, Prudy Ricky.